Ooh, no fucking way, bro. What is this RNG? Alright, guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Lash, and today, this time, I'm gonna be covering almost every single boss that I did good this week. I'm gonna change up the content a bit so I don't have to spam you guys with 3 minute videos only. So, for half us, I usually just use every cooldown on pull besides my Berserking because I want to use it for a cleave after maybe two dragons are dead. Sadly, in this 10 month, we don't really want to push to the limits that much. Therefore, we don't spawn the fourth dragon, which is okay. I don't really mind it. It's an ult run anyways. So my main goal here is to always hit the one that's supposed to die ASAP, which is Skull here. I actually almost over aggroed it, so I had to vanish. Once Skull is dead, you can see me moving up to cross, so I can immediately start, you know, just blasting it down. And get even more damage increase on the raid. Unfortunately, you can't really parse on this boss if everyone is focusing boss. If that's the case, then boss is gonna just fly way too fast and you won't really get to pump as hard as you can on it. Keep in mind, every time a dragon dies, it's 100% damage taken on the boss. So if 8 people are just constantly blasting into boss and not the off targets, Boss is gonna melt way faster than you can, you know, kill off the fourth dragon even. Which means you have to sacrifice some people in order to get the good parses. But regardless, I did around the 99 here. I think my DPS at the end was around 135k if I'm not wrong. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't good either. I've seen people do 200k even, I think. Or at maybe around 180. But anyways, this is Ascendant Council, this time we're gonna do tank. I've recently noticed that if you tank this boss, it's actually better for your rogue, because, you know, obviously more blade for the cleave, since the off tank is not doing that much damage anymore. Here was actually a perfect split. We pushed both down at the same time, which is nice. Usually one of these just gets pushed really fast and there is, you know, a huge HP gap. Which is not the worst, but you don't really want that anyways. You always want to push these two kind of the same HP. They're about to hit 25%. But yeah, I got like a massive cleave here for sure. It was amazing. I think I will actually stick to having only double tank on my rogue. Just so I can, you know, giga damage cleave. Remember, whenever there is new bosses, just redirect this next one with your insights. Do not lose out on the insights, it's really nice to have them. I've actually stopped using Gouge while I don't have any insight besides red. I've noticed that if I kind of, how do I say it, delay by using Gouge, because every time I use Gouge, I skip a GCD on this SS or Revealing Strike, which means I just slow down myself from hitting 30% DPS increase. So why would I do that until I'm actually 30%? It didn't really make sense to me, so I stopped doing it. I'm only gouging now when it's red in sight. I feel like it's much better. But yeah. It's... Here right now it's really nice. Both of them are 30. I pushed really good. I ended up on 50k DPS before even reaching phase 3, which is amazing. And even then, it's not over yet, like I'm not even getting a good parse until the boss is actually dead without me being picked up. So you still have to get lucky here and don't get picked up by the boss when she does the ability. I think it's gravity crush or something on the screen, yeah that's the one. You just have to pray to the gods that that doesn't happen to you. You you can see that my haste pot, or you know, the tolver pot is actually on cooldown. It's because I used it on the two bosses before. I wanted to have all the damage output I can have on cleave and not, you know, solo target. Because it's much more DPS than here. I would say this ascendant here is 
much better than the ones I've did before. Mainly just because of the fact that my off tank wasn't DPS here. And he was pumping as a tank until his cat. You know. So yeah, I will stick to that for sure. It felt a lot better with cleaving as well. As long as your tanks are on the same page and they don't run away from each other, it's not a big deal at all. And it's more DPS for you. So I suggest trying it for yourselves. This is actually the first decent Shogal I've had so far into the phase. It wasn't that bad of a pull, but it wasn't the best either. I didn't really get to cleave much on creations in phase 2, sadly. They were spread as fuck, since we didn't do the stair stack. But yeah, just so you guys know, the moment these mobs hit 0 on the HP, nothing counts on them anymore, so you don't have to bother cleaving them. But just know that while they're up, your killing spree might hit them, so be careful with that one. You just saw me fuck my killing spree up there. Honestly, I feel like 10 men has a better design of bosses than 25 men for rogues. It's just much better cleave. And there's less people cleaving with you. So you just get to do at least one eviscerate when before the mob is dead, obviously. I actually made a mistake here by disabling my blade flurry. Which is not the biggest deal, but I did miss around like 50k damage there. The push for this one is actually really bad because the TPS is too low. I have like a few alts and undergeared people. They have a lot of blues on them, so this is not really there. But that's how it goes when there's an Ultron. But your phase one is a bit of a repetitive bullshit. Just constantly get to cleave a mob, then it dies, you go back to normal. Here you can see me killing spring while I have Blood Fury on. Like during the fight I actually noticed that my killing spree hit the 0% mob. So I was like why not just keep the Blood Fury on till the killing spree is out. So I just did that. Wasn't that bad actually. But it does affect my energy region. I think I got to parry this boss once here because I went in front of it. Which was really bad because it's on my eviscerate. Rogues can actually achieve a lot of cleave on these boss fights, especially Sinestra. Like you could have this Pite Caller and the Dragon all to yourself if your rage just allows it and you blast cleave into them. 24-7 and during haste man you will destroy that dragon in no time that's like a million added to your dps rogan sinestra is just a i don't know a god you're literally on drugs 24-7 full energy and if you guys watched my last video which i will link in the description i've learned a new method actually on sinestra Whenever there is a, what are they called, a cutter lined up to me, all I do is I go to the left of the bus, delay as much as I can with the cutter, and then killing spree the bus, I will just appear in the middle of the front of her, and fully skip moving out on that cutter. You can't really do it all the time since, you know, it might happen to you multiple times in a fight, but one of those cutters is going to be skipped at least, which is nice. But just do let your, you know, other link know that you're not gonna be crossing them, in case that's the play you guys do. Like in our pugs or raids, we always cross each other, so the other person can reach the boss faster as well. Chugalda is really fast in phase two, so I suggest letting your tank know that they should go to the center already. You really don't want to hit the boss to zero because it doesn't help anything. If he's zero, he's going to be have to 
constantly run all the way up to middle and you will have a fall off in your DPS. Magma is actually my favorite boss in 25 man. In 10 man not much. He dies way too fast in 10 man and on top of that the ad dies way too fast. Like if you have one guy cleaving with you it's already over. That ad is gonna get melted down. I've recently started to actually not A your on pull anymore just to see how it feels. It wasn't the worst, but I feel like if you have RNG behind you, you could easily get AR back for the head. Unfortunately here I didn't actually have it for the head. Or well, I did, but for half of it. The other half I didn't, because I AR'd way too late into the fight here. I just wanted to see how it feels if I have it exactly the moment the construct is out. I think if I used AR at least 10 seconds earlier, it would have been perfect timing. But since I didn't have the best RNG, no good procs, no anything, I kind of slacked in using eviscerates to get my AR back. But regardless, you can't really parse in 10 man with Magma as a rogue at least, because Construct is way too low for health. At this point you might even have to keep a construct alive before the head even down goes down that is. Just cleave two heads or constructs at the same time. You know what I mean? So like one dies, you go up to the next one again during head. I think that's the only way a rogue can parse in 10 men now. So you can just pump all the big damage onto the head as well. So the head died before this should be alive right now. So you can cleave on both of them. It's like, look at the health of this fucking construct. It's already dead. And I'm not even ARing yet. I just ARed and the mob died. It's that bad. You actually had the perfect lust here. You don't really want the lust to be up while the boss is dying. So you want to kind of use it 5 seconds early. So it lasts until you're about to finish the boss off. I think I did like the best Meloriac I've had so far. And I don't even know why. It kind of did everything the same as usual. I didn't change anything on Meloriac. I just did like really nice. Let's say this wheels for sure helped. This time I did like a lot of cleave blood flurry into this wheels. Almost even died during it, but faint is faint is just a savior. I love fainting. I will never trick again. Like I don't even care if trick is gonna help the raid. In Cataclysm, trick is such a minimal bullshit anyways. You should just throw it off until they bring a four set or two set that gives you a reason to actually press trick. Which is gonna be Firelands on Dragon Soul. I actually hate pressing an ability to fill up my gaps, but when Trink ain't it, like, I just. I don't like the ability of Trick. But yeah, as I said, this Will's Cleave here was really nice. I've never done 45k here. I usually dropped to 34, 5. While everyone else was cleaving, but this time I don't even know what happened. Like I did, I just did good. Maybe it's crit RNG, maybe it's haste. I have no idea. I didn't really get get any upgrades, anyways. My gear is the same as before. In fact, that mistral circle I got before the raid here is the very first upgrade I've gotten after like two months, I believe. And obviously the Alakir legs are dodging me for life, so... Unlucky with that one, what can I do? It's not gonna drop for me. So yeah, execute time and I'm actually at 39k DPS, which is like a first for me. Usually I do really bad on Meloriac. This time it was pretty nice. And I don't think if it was gear. I just think it was pure RNG 
me getting good crits. And the boss also died really fast. Like even though it was an ult run, we actually did really good damage. But anyways, that's it for the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.